Howdy guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I want to go over some brick. Plus, I want to go over what a lot of folks are asking me. They say, Kirk, how do you do that stuff by yourself? We have tried, and it's too difficult. Well, to answer that question and work at the same time, I don't do it by myself. Jay usually helps. Jay is on the camera. He's the bearded plasterer or Lou, my brother, uh, helps too. Because, guys, this is a, not a one-man show. This is a two-man job. If you guys think, oh, I'm fit, I'm young, I'm 20 years old, I can do this by myself, wrong. Uh, even when I was 20, I didn't try to do this myself. I actually did, but it was too difficult because now you have to keep an eye on your mix, your mud, and and when it sets, and often it's really tough, as Jay has found out, because he's doing a house by himself and decided, hey, I guess I'll get Uncle Lou to help. So what I'm doing here, guys, is covering up some brick. Now, granted, I only have to go to here, but we're taking it down to here because they're covering all this stuff up. And we don't have to do the tops because they got a cap for this. What I tell folks, if you're going to go over brick, guys, is put it on thick enough where you're just skim coating. A lot of guys call and say, hey, I'm going to scratch and brown over brick. And I say, well, you don't need a scratch coat and a brown coat. You need one skim coat. And if you're good or you have some time in, you know all you need is a half inch or more, one coat. The idea is that coat got to be thick enough that when it dries, you don't see all the grout lines. And as long as I've been doing this, guys, I'll tell you right now, you'll need about a half inch or more. How thick am I going? A little over a half inch. I'm going a little over a half inch because I can, and I want to make certain that the grout lines don't show even though they're going to paint it. And you guys who do it yourself and you screw it up by putting it too thin and you can see the grout lines, paint it. You won't see the grout lines when it rains. That's all you got to do is paint it. Uh, now the top here, you see how that's jacked up. That gives me a half inch to about almost three quarters. Now what I do is I just take my trowel and scrape that off. Now you can see this is rough brick, but you can see it's out. And here's a tip, guys. If you're not sure, put a little bit more. Like, say, you can just put a little bit more on it, on the top. You can do that. The next phase, I'm going to go over here to a phase that Jay already did. He got his tools there. I'm going to put mine here. How do you know when the cement is ready? Well, that's a good question, and I'm in the shade, but let's see. All you have to do is to test. All right, are you ready? No. Can I work this mud? Yes. Here's what we're doing. We're giving it a float finish. You see the aggregates coming out. Aggregate, fancy word for sand. You can take a sponge float, a green sponge float, guys. And generally, I'll tap it on the side of the bucket. If I go like this, I bend this the wrong way. So tap it on the side of the bucket. Now, Jay already floated this. Let's see, I better get out of the sunlight. Sit down here. So I'm going to float it this way. And we're, all we're doing is bringing the sand out, guys. We're bringing the aggregate out. So it's called a sand finish or a float finish. They both mean the exact same thing. By the way, cool vents, huh? These are vents that allow the air to go under the house. Now we're going to pretty these vents up and pretty the top up. And last thing I'll show you right here, guys, before we put a uh, so-called ending on this, because when we're completely done, we'll show you that too. You take the top and you bring, the, bring it horizontally. And now I'm, I keep forgetting, I'm in the shade and that blocks out the camera. I gotta do a sunny spot. Okay, you take the float this way, then you bring it up this way. You pull down and if it's too wet, guys, just, just stick your finger in it. If it's 
I mean, you want it where it's uh, a little stiffer than this, but again, guys, I'm used to this stuff, so I can go ahead and uh, float this. In fact, Jay's used to it too because he already floated this right here. Anyway, uh, sand, sand or float finish. We're going to continue this whole wall. When we're done, we'll give you a, a, a tour of it and just show you what it looks like. Hopefully, the shade won't be in our way. All right, guys, now I'm just showing off because we got all this stuff in the way. I was going to unhook the hose, and I thought, man, I'm going to leave the hose and, and show you how we do it around pipes, guys. Same thing, guys. What we're doing is, is putting it on a little thick, at least over that half inch, all right, with the pipe there. Now, how are we going to go around this pipe? That was, that was the question earlier. How are we going to get around that? Well... I got a pretty big trowel here. It's a 16 inch. So, 16 inch, no problemo. We take it, come here, take it, put a little extra, pull it upward. And yeah, we'll drop a little bit of mud, but that's not a big deal. What I generally do is put it down, go behind it, and use the toe. I'm using the toe of my trowel to come down and then I'm going to use the top to cover it. Here we go. We'll go over it. Get up there. Adhere, here, baby. You want to talk a little bit about prep work? Oh, prep work. This wall was full of moss. So Jay got here before I did because this is Jay's job. And he pressure washed it. If you got moss, dirt, dust, grime on any surface, guess what? Nothing will adhere. Nothing. Nothing adheres to dust, guys. So if you have that, get rid of it. You could wire brush it and spend all day, but that creates a lot of dust. Or you can just use what Jay did, a pressure washer. The pressure washer not only gets all the dust off, but it, it cleans it deep enough so that it micro etches it or scores it so that this stucco here will adhere. <laughs> Stuckle here will adhere. You got to have this stuff where it adheres well because obviously nobody wants to come back and redo a wall. Now, I'm just, any holidays I see, I put it on the tip here or the toe of the trowel and just go upward motion. Upward, just right there. And right there where it's connected to the wall, even with this trowel being a little bit big. I could uh, I can put it here and basically side it that way. Or let's see, trowel's big enough. I can take it sideways, boom, and I got my paper close enough so that if it's in the way, say like if it's in the way right there, and a little bit drops, I take the paper and just push it right back up. Get right back up there, guys. Get back up there. We've done walls where there's 40, 50 pipes, and I hear the same thing. How are you going to get behind those pipes? Well, just like this. Use the toe and the heel independently, and then come back with the whole trowel and trowel it out tighter and get all your holidays and humps and bumps out. Anyway, just thought I'd point that out, guys, because anytime you see pipes, electrical outlets, you got to know how to plaster to get around them, guys. All right, guys, we'll, we'll show you what we've done here. Now, we floated it with the green sponge float, made everything true and plumb. And guys, this one here, this wall, it's, it's pretty straight. It's pretty perfect with the sand grit. Everything is uniform, but you don't have to do it this perfect or straight. You guys could put trowel marks in it. You could put humps in it. You can do old world charm give it some old world charms and have some imagination and make it look different than the fellow's house next door anyway my name is kirk jason on the camera we thank you for watching and as usual live long and plaster by the way folks my dad and i are now members of amazon affiliates so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that, for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then.
Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one.